Now, if you're anything like me, you're probably quite nervous about drawing a piece of DNA. And uh, of course, I certainly was, especially because I knew it was going to go into a video. So here's my drawing of a piece of DNA. And I think the point I want to illustrate here is that perfection is not necessary. As you can see in my diagram, my pentagons are certainly pentagons, um, but not everything is a straight line, evidently. Um, so one of the most difficult parts tends to be to try to draw the second strand of the DNA because it is anti-parallel. So if you're doing this on paper, I have seen some students before turn their paper or their book the other way around so that they're always drawing in the same direction. Um, and I've just got used to drawing the second strand in the opposite direction. Again, perfection not necessary. My pentagons are certainly not quite the same shape as the first strand, but there's still a pentagon. Don't forget to label your nitrogenous bases. A, T, C and G is fine. It is also beneficial to write somewhere what the A, the T, the C and the G actually mean. The bonds in the middle are hydrogen bonds. I'm going to label them later. Uh, notice that between the A and the T is two hydrogen bonds, C and G, three hydrogen bonds. However, the IB does not expect you to memorize the number of hydrogen bonds. So ultimately, as long as you label them as hydrogen bonds, um, you should be just fine there. So I always start by labeling the parts of the nucleotide. It's just kind of an order that helps me to remember my labels. Um, and the one that I often forget quite quickly is just the nucleotide itself. So not only do the parts, but also circle one nucleotide. Even though I just made mention already of the hydrogen bonds, the second thing I start labeling are the bonds themselves within the DNA molecule. So the covalent bond on the sugar phosphate backbone and the hydrogen bonding between the complementary base pairs. Then we get to some optional annotations. I like to put a couple of arrows to illustrate the anti-parallel nature of the molecule. And I tend to write that there as well, although not required. And if you are higher level, I would also suggest that you label the directionality of the two strands of DNA. That's useful, but just for the higher level students.